Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. It's December the 11th, I believe it is. 11th or 12th. Anyway, it's Monday. Monday's usually my day off. I'm going to go do a couple of projects over at the church today, uh, about lunchtime. And I kind of wanted to give everybody an update on Oreo. So there's Oreo in the background, and he is feeling better. He's out of quarantine. He's up on his feet. He's eating and back to his normal routine of eating quite a bit. He's drinking good, keeping his belly full. And all the other goats are out here this morning having a good time. They're enjoying the sunshine. And <clears throat> kind of want to just let you know what our plan is with Oreo. So we have decided that we are going to sell Oreo. We're going to end up taking him to the auction. That's where he'll end up going. I, we've had enough health problems and situations out of him that we don't really want somebody else to get that problem on their farm. This is a, a meat goat operation, and so the right thing to do with a cold goat is to go to the meat market, and that's where he'll end up going. He's just not growing. He's not staying healthy. Hello, Star. Star wants to say hello this morning. This is our lead goat here, Star. So say hello to the camera. There you go. Good morning, everybody. Okay, Star, let me have it back. Now, what what happens with Oreo? He's still got a really dirty backside, but he is drying up. So now that he's drying up, I'm going to catch him today and clean him up real good. And we're just going to keep feeding him good and giving him everything that he needs. And so about the end of this month, the end of December, he'll go to the auction. And kind of excited we ran across a farm about a hundred miles from here that has raised Kiko goats for a long time they've got 100% New Zealand Kikos they're not paper goats which is exactly what we want and they've got five nice bucks that are grown out for us to pick from and so my wife and I have scheduled a trip down there to see them let's see if you can yeah we got one of Lisa's chickens in there this morning and so we've got an appointment with those folks to go down there and look at their goats and hopefully pick one out that'll be january the third so the first of january we'll be hopefully bringing a new buck in to the place he's 100 percent kiko and that'll be what we're looking for so i'll keep you posted today throughout the day on this monday there's a few things we're going to do i'm going to give you an update on piper as well kind of do a little upgrade on piper situation So with Piper's old dangle stick that she's been wearing, it's a piece of three-quarter inch PVC pipe. It's hollow. And so what we're finding is she's she's back to being able to chew on the goats and chase them an awful lot more than we want her to. She's back to being able to chase the goats now and, and kind of seen some evidence she's been chewing on them again. So she's grown a lot and this obviously was doing the trick, but now it's, it's not... Uh, it's not a big enough deterrent for her now. So what I've done, I'm gonna, I'm, I've got another collar here from another old coon ham, and I'm going to make another one. I'm not, I don't want to change this one. I want to keep this one because we plan on having more livestock guardian pups. And so this is the right size for, for that size of a dog, and I'll hang on to that. I went and cut me a piece of hickory, and I'm going to go to the, to the miter saw here in just a little bit and cut it into a certain length. And then I'm going to take a lot of these, all these knots down and smooth it out. And I've got some trapping swivels out of my trapping equipment here that, that um, basically you just use them to, to make a swivel so the chain won't bind. So we're going to make up another dangle stick today. This is not hollow. It's going to be dense. It's going to be a little heavier. I'm trying to be careful about making sure it's not too much weight for her neck to cause her any problems such as you and I would experience problems, chiropractic problems, but also enough that it's dense enough and it's enough that when she tries to run with it and stuff, it's, it's an annoyance to her to keep her from doing it. So that's what we're going to be doing the, today. One of the projects we're going to be doing today, the other is, like I said, catching Hoover and cleaning up his backside and getting all that 
matted stuff out of his hair and really trying to get him where he can gain his weight back and start looking good again. Really glad that, that he's turned the corner and we've been praying for him and we've been doctoring him, we've been watching him, giving him attention and I'm really glad to see that he has turned the corner and I think he's going to be all right, but he's not going to be all right for us here. Don't let me get too far off the subject. Back to the, the, the reason you selected this video to watch this video. I'm going to pause the camera, meet you over there at the miter saw, and I'll just keep moving it back and you'll see the process here. I don't know how much of that I got with the draw knife. Part of making these videos is you can't do things over unless you want to start from scratch. And I looked up and I had the camera on pause. This is a draw knife. It was a gift to me a few years back, a couple of years back from a, an old friend. He was a tool fanatic. And it's called, it's a name brand Lumberjack Tools made in the USA. And I never have been able to use it. I don't know if I had to do this, but I went ahead and put it in the vise here and took the bark off and smoothed the knots down and wanted to try it out and I wanted you to see but uh, boy it cut good, it was sharp, did good and that's a really dense piece of wood I definitely don't want it hitting me on the arm definitely don't want it hitting me in the chest and so hopefully this will be just the trick to step up from the hollow PVC pipe this is way more annoying and irritating than a piece of hollow pipe would be, PVC pipe would be so let's get back to the other workbench and finish it up. Okay, so here's what I've learned on further discovery. I don't have everything I need to make a second one. I was really hoping to have two and just never change this one. But I had originally made this one with a clasp buckle in the middle. So I could change this out if I wanted to. Come to find out, I've looked through my stuff. I don't have another eye bolt. And I don't have another clasp. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and and convert this one over to the heavier one. So we're gonna we're gonna drill a hole, we're gonna use this same eye bolt and go that route. just that simple just that easy I think what I'll do is probably put this on her and then see if I feel like I need to add a link I might go ahead and add a link here anyway just to make it a little bit longer make it hit her just a little bit below the chest and on the legs but we'll put it on her first see how it works and I think what I'll do I've just said here as I've talked about it I think I won't add the link until we see if we feel like we need to drop this down a little bit lower on her on her uh, below her chest. So we'll go down and put it on her, see what happens, see how she likes it. Sit, good girl. So I've been working with Piper here. A little bit of obedience training. She's probably up around, I would say, 50, 60 pounds by now. And so uh, she was growing and getting ahead of us. 
And so I want to do some obedience training on the lead. I want to be able to get her in the vehicle if we need to take her to a vet. I want to be able to handle her. I want to be able to catch her. And so just a good chance now since we're getting ready to put the new collar on her. And I was going to get her out. Oh, girl. She's very well behaved. It's just a good opportunity now to do a little bit of our obedience training. I'll do that on the camera. And get the collar on her and see how she reacts. I'm sure she won't like it. But you can say hi to the folks. She's real good. She, she won't jump on us. And uh, once in a while, she'll get up on the fence, on the other side of the fence for us to pet her, but she doesn't even really like to do that. So I think she's a very smart dog. And we'll do just a little bit of obedience training here and then get her collar on and turn her out. See ya. So I'm not real sure, just looking at it right now. I might need to add a link to that and make it longer, but we'll watch her and see what happens throughout the day. Little update on Piper here. We're gonna leave it just like it is. I think it's working just right. I think it's hitting her just about right. About the chest and the legs. It's kind of an irritation to her, it slowed her down. And what are you whining about? Oh, you want somebody to give you some attention, huh? You want some attention? Yeah, she's wanting some attention, that's okay. But I think we're gonna leave it just like it is and watch her for a couple of days, see how it goes. This is just part of it, part of her training, part of getting her ready to do her job. I know that it can be a little bit frustrating, it can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes, but the problem is is not necessarily unsolved with her chewing on the goats and chasing the goats. It's just that the solution has to grow as the dog grows. And so I think we'll call it a success for now.